In 400 BC, Persian nobles were drinking chilled wine with ice cubes in the middle of the Dashti Kavir Desert, where summer temperatures reached 50 degrees Celsius. That's 122 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to cook an egg on the sand. No electricity, no refrigeration, no modern technology whatsoever. Just pure crystal clear ice, manufactured in one of the hottest places on Earth, where water evaporates before it hits the ground. This shouldn't be possible. The laws of physics say it's impossible. But the ancient Persians didn't just make ice in the desert, they produced it on an industrial scale. They stored hundreds of tons through blazing summers, and the way they did it was so brilliant, so ingeniously simple, that when modern scientists first studied it, they refused to believe it could actually work. What you're about to learn will completely change how you think about ancient technology. Because while we assume people in the past were primitive, they were actually manipulating the laws of physics in ways that seem like magic even today. The ancient ice-making technique I'm about to show you was used for over 2,000 years. It required no fuel, no moving parts, and the ice it produced was so pure that Persian royalty preferred it over naturally frozen ice from the mountains. But here's the truly mind-blowing part. This technique was deliberately destroyed and forgotten. And the reason why will shock you. Before we dive into this ancient mystery, if you're fascinated by lost technologies and historical secrets that mainstream education never taught you, make sure you're subscribed with notifications on. We're uncovering the dark, bizarre and impossible truths of ancient history every week. And trust me, after learning how ancients made ice in the desert, you'll want to see what other impossible things they were doing. Hit that subscribe button now because what comes next will make you question everything you thought you knew about ancient civilizations. The secret lay in something called a yakchal, literally meaning ice pit in Persian. But calling it a pit is like calling the pyramids a pile of stones. These structures were engineering masterpieces that stood up to 60 feet tall. That's an 18-meter dome rising from the desert floor like an ancient spaceship. The walls at the base were over two meters thick, but it wasn't their size that made them special. It was what happened inside them at night. You see, the ancient Persians discovered something that seems to violate common sense. You can make ice in the desert when the air temperature is still above freezing. They were exploiting a phenomenon that wouldn't be scientifically explained until 2,000 years later. Something called radiative cooling and evaporative cooling working together. But before I explain how they did it, you need to understand the scale of this operation. The largest yakchal ever discovered could hold 5,000 cubic meters of ice. That's equivalent to two Olympic swimming pools, frozen solid, sitting in the middle of the desert where camels were dying of heat stroke. Here's how they did it. First, they didn't try to make ice during the day. That would be insane. The process began at sunset, in the cooler months between December and March. But even then, nighttime temperatures rarely dropped below 5 degrees Celsius, still too warm for water to freeze naturally. The Persians built long, shallow pools, only about 40 centimeters deep, protected on three sides by massive walls. These weren't ordinary walls. They were made from a special mixture called saruj, a waterproof mortar combining sand, clay, egg whites, goat hair, and ash in very specific proportions. But here's where it gets weird. They added one more ingredient that sounds like ancient alchemy, tree bark from a specific local tree that modern scientists discovered has natural antibacterial properties. This kept the water pure during the freezing process. The exact recipe was guarded more carefully than military secrets. Ice-making families would pass down the proportions from father to son in whispered conversations never written down. One captured ice maker in 224 AD chose to have his tongue cut out rather than reveal the formula to rival city-states. At nightfall, servants would fill these shallow pools with water. The water had to be exactly the right depth. Too deep, and it wouldn't freeze. Too shallow, and it would evaporate completely. They used measuring sticks passed down through generations, marked with notches that indicated perfect depth for different times of year. Then, the physics magic began. On clear desert nights, something extraordinary happens. The lack of clouds and humidity means heat radiates from the earth straight into space at an incredible rate. The shallow water in the pools would start radiating heat upward, 
This is the radiative cooling effect, but that alone wouldn't freeze water. Here's where the Persian genius comes in. The walls they built weren't just barriers, they were carefully angled to block warm wind while creating a specific airflow pattern. As the slight desert breeze moved across the water surface, it caused evaporation. And evaporation requires energy. It literally sucks heat out of the remaining water. The combination of radiative cooling and evaporative cooling could drop the water temperature by up to 15 degrees Celsius below air temperature. So even when the air was 5 degrees, the water could reach minus 10. But there was a third factor that scientists only recently discovered. The Persians were adding something to the water. Ancient texts mention the white powder of the mountains, initially thought to be salt, but chemical analysis of residue in ancient Yakchals revealed it was actually a form of natural potassium nitrate. This lowered the freezing point of water while simultaneously increasing the rate of evaporative cooling. They were essentially creating a chemical reaction that pulled even more heat from the water. Modern chemists calculated that this addition could drop the temperature another 5 degrees, meaning they could make ice even when nighttime temperatures stayed at 10 degrees Celsius. By morning, they had sheets of ice several centimeters thick, but making ice was only half the challenge. Now they had to store it through the summer when temperatures reached 50 degrees Celsius. Before dawn, workers would rush to harvest the ice, breaking it into manageable chunks. They had to work fast. Once the sun hit those pools, any remaining ice would vanish in minutes. The ice was then transported into the Yakchal itself, that massive domed structure I mentioned earlier. And this is where things get even more impossible. The inside of a Yakchal was like entering another dimension. While outside temperatures could reach hellish levels, inside it stayed close to freezing, year-round, without any power source. The secret was in the dome's design, the Persians had accidentally discovered something called the stack effect. Hot air rises and escapes through vents at the top, while cooler air gets pulled in through underground channels called kanats. These kanats were engineering marvels themselves, underground water channels that ran for kilometers, tapping into mountain aquifers. The water flowing through them was naturally cold, and as air passed over this water before entering the Yakchal, it cooled dramatically. Some kanats ran 40 meters underground where temperatures remain constant year-round. But here's the truly insane part. The walls contained dead air spaces, essentially ancient insulation. The egg whites and goat hair in the Saruj created tiny air pockets that modern scientists calculate had an R value comparable to modern fiberglass insulation. The ice was packed in straw and sawdust, then stacked in a massive pyramid inside the dome. The bigger the ice mass, the slower it melted. Thermal inertia in action. Now, you might think this was just for preserving food or cooling drinks, but the ancient records reveal something darker. Ice became a symbol of ultimate power. Persian kings would send ice to visiting dignitaries in the middle of summer as a display of their godlike abilities. I can command winter in the desert. The ice trade became so lucrative that ice wars broke out between cities. There are records of entire Yakchals being destroyed by rival factions, Guards were posted to protect these structures like they were treasuries, because in a way they were. One Persian merchant in 450 BC made the equivalent of $10 million in today's money from a single summer of ice sales. He owned seven Yakchals and employed over 200 workers. His ice empire was so vast that when he died, his sons fought a literal war over who would inherit the ice routes. But here's where it gets truly disturbing. The workers who harvested ice, called Yakchal Kesh, had one of the most dangerous jobs in ancient Persia. They worked in freezing water in the dark, racing against sunrise. Many developed severe frostbite, losing fingers and toes. The historical records describe them as the men marked by winter because of their blackened, frostbitten extremities. The mortality rate for ice workers was staggering. Persian census records from 380 BC show that the average life expectancy of a Yakchal Kesh was just 31 years compared to 45 for other labourers. They died from hypothermia, infections from frostbite, and something the ancient texts call the ice lung, probably pneumonia from constantly breathing super-cooled air. And if they were too slow? If the ice melted before reaching storage? The punishment in some regions was being locked inside the Yakchal. 
in the freezing darkness, sometimes for days. Recent archaeological discoveries have revealed that Yakchals served purposes far beyond food preservation. Hidden chambers have been found with human remains, perfectly preserved by the cold. These weren't accidental deaths. Analysis shows these bodies were placed deliberately, often with valuable items. Some researchers believe wealthy Persians used Yakchals as temporary mausoleums, preserving bodies until proper burial ceremonies could be arranged. But there's evidence of darker uses. Persian legal documents mention the Ice Judgment, a form of trial by ordeal where accused criminals were forced to retrieve objects from the bottom of ice-filled Yakchals. If they survived, they were innocent. The recovery rate was less than 10%. One account from 320 BC describes a Persian general who used a Yakchal as a torture chamber. Prisoners were stripped and left on the ice overnight. Those who survived were often permanently paralyzed from severe frostbite. The general called it the living death. For over 2,000 years, this technology spread across the ancient world. Similar structures appeared in India, Turkey, and North Africa. The technique was perfected to the point where a single yak child could store 5,000 tons of ice, enough to supply a city through the entire summer. But then something strange happened. In the early 20th century, the knowledge began to disappear, not gradually, but suddenly as if deliberately erased. The last traditional ice makers died without passing on their secrets. The exact proportions of Saruj were forgotten. The specific techniques for creating optimal freezing conditions lost. Some historians believe this was intentional. As mechanical refrigeration arrived, the ice-making guilds saw their doom approaching. Rather than let their sacred knowledge be commercialized or corrupted, they chose to let it die with them. There's a documented case from 1918 where the last master ice maker of Isfahan, a man named Rostam Yakchali, burned all his family's records and drawings. When asked why, he reportedly said, the old magic should not live in the new world. Let it sleep with the ancestors. His apprentices begged him to reconsider, but he took the secrets to his grave three months later. In the 1970s, scientists studying ancient cooling techniques were baffled by the Yak Charles. Computer models suggested they shouldn't work. The physics seemed wrong. It wasn't until they actually rebuilt one using archaeological evidence that they discovered the truth. The ancient Persians had unknowingly created a perfect storm of thermodynamic effects. They were using radiative cooling, now being studied for power-free cooling systems. Evaporative cooling, still used in modern swamp coolers. Thermal mass storage, now used in passive solar design. Stack effect ventilation, used in modern green buildings. Super insulation techniques, the egg white and goat hair mixture. Modern engineers calculated that a properly built yak chal is actually more energy efficient than electric refrigeration for large-scale ice storage. Some companies are now experimenting with updated versions for sustainable cooling in desert regions. In 2019, a team from MIT successfully created ice in the Sahara Desert using only the ancient Persian principles, no electricity required. They produced 40 kilograms of ice in a single night using equipment that cost less than $100 to build. The implications are staggering. In a world facing climate change and energy crises, a 2,400-year-old technology might hold keys to sustainable cooling. But here's what the archaeological records recently revealed that nobody talks about. The Yak Charles weren't just for ice. Hidden compartments have been found in some structures. Persian texts hint at the other purpose of these buildings. Some researchers believe they were used to store things that needed to disappear, things that would be destroyed by the extreme cold and never found. In 2021, archaeologists excavating a Yakchal near Yazd made a chilling discovery. In a sealed chamber, they found scrolls that had been deliberately frozen then shattered. The fragments, when painstakingly reassembled, contained names and crimes, a frozen archive of executions and disappearances, there are stories of criminals being told they could go free if they survived a night in an empty yakchal. None ever did. The combination of cold, darkness, and what survivors described as the weight of the air itself was essentially a death sentence. One partially preserved account describes the experience. The cold enters through your skin like needles, 
then deeper into your bones. Your breath freezes in your lungs. The darkness is absolute. You cannot tell if your eyes are open or closed. Time stops. Most men's hearts simply stop. Perhaps most tragically, we've lost more than just the technique. Ancient texts reference medical uses for the yakchal ice that we're only beginning to understand. Persian physicians used controlled exposure to yakchal cold to treat certain fevers and infections. They had specific protocols, how long to apply ice to which body parts, in what patterns. Modern doctors studying these texts believe they might have been inducing therapeutic hypothermia, a technique discovered by modern medicine in the 1950s. There are also references to using yakchal ice for preserving medicines and creating concentrated extracts. The Persians somehow knew that certain medicinal compounds became more potent when frozen and thawed repeatedly, a process similar to modern freeze concentration. One recovered text mentions the blue medicine of winter, a mysterious substance that could only be created in a yakchal. Scholars believe it might have been a form of antibiotic created by cultivating specific bacteria in the controlled cold environment. We'll never know for sure. So the next time you drop ice cubes in your drink, remember, 2,400 years ago, someone in the middle of the Persian desert was doing the exact same thing. They had no electricity, no modern science, no refrigeration technology, just an understanding of physics so advanced that we're only now beginning to appreciate it. The ancient world wasn't primitive. It was brilliant in ways we're still discovering. They made ice in the desert, turned the impossible into the everyday, and left us structures that challenge everything we think we know about what's possible without modern technology. The Yakchals still standing today are monuments to human ingenuity and reminders that sometimes the old ways weren't just different. Sometimes they were better, and sometimes they held secrets we were never meant to find.